guys, so welcome to the Crochet Cakes YouTube channel. This is a YouTube channel where you can find my podcast, which this is an episode of, and as some crochet tutorials. Speaking of podcasts, today's episode, we are going to be talking about part two of my crochet garment tour, and that is cardigans. Hey guys, how are you doing today? Welcome back to another podcast episode. I hope that you've had a good crafty couple of weeks, um, at least craftier than I've been. I can't say I've actually been doing much crochet or crafting because I've had a pain flare up in the valley of my uh, thumb, all this, I don't know if it's called tendonitis, maybe not, but I've had that. So uh, instead I've been doing a lot of yoga. I'm very, very proud to say that this year, 2021, has been the year in which I've completed my 30-day yoga journey, and that is from Yoga with Adrian, by the way. She's the uh, yoga YouTube channel I subscribe to, and I just love her energy and her just general calm demeanor and how she encourages you to do what feels good in your life. So I've been doing yoga every morning and I'm very, very happy about that. And if you, like me, tend to have uh, flare-ups in you know, your elbow joints, your shoulders, your back, then if you are able, please do some yoga. It's, it's honestly life-changing. I always feel so great after I start my day with yoga, followed with a cup of tea, because we need to nurture ourselves inside and out. And by nurture, I do mean whatever feels good, because sometimes nurture for me is eat a bag of potato chips, and I feel good about that. So anyway, whatever you have been up to these weeks, I hope that it's been fun, but I think you guys are here, you know, maybe for some crochet content. So let's get cracking with the second part of my crochet wardrobe, and let us conveniently start with what I am wearing, because what I am wearing is I shall insert nice pictures here, and perhaps even, if I remember, a little video. Um, but what I am wearing is the Good Vintage Granny Cardigan by Fran Morgan. Yes, it is the Good Vintage Granny Cardi Cardigan, and I do stress that because I've had several people ask me what this cardigan pattern is, and when I tell them that it's the Good Vintage Granny Cardi by Fran Morgan, I, I can't say they look at me because we're not talking face to face, but I, I feel the look of, no, I mean, this cardigan, and it's like, yes, yes, see, yeah, uh-huh, I said, well, that's the same cardigan, uh, but it has been modified to adjust for a lack of yarn. <laughs> If you know me, you know it's my crochet cakes tradition to try and attempt to make crochet garments with whatever yarns, quantities I have on hand. Sometimes I am successful, sometimes I am not. And this was a case of I am not. But I kind of was, because I still managed to make a functional wearable cardigan. So let's talk about this. If um, I remember, I'll include, well, I'll, I will remember, I'll include a little i card somewhere here or a link in the description box below, which reminds me, anything I talk about, any links, any ways to contact me will be available in the description box below. Yay, we got that part. I always forget to say that part. Oh, and timestamps. You will also find timestamps with, uh, you know, accompanied by titles, so in case you are more interested by some things than others, you can just skip ahead and um, still interact with me and us in this lovely YouTube podcast crochet cakes community. Right, so back to this cardigan. I have called this, and you will find it, as the Nemesis cardigan in my Ravelry page. Why? Because I made it five times. I'm, I'm not even kidding. I'm pretty sure I frogged back this cardigan five times because I never got gauge. Let me repeat that for you. I never got gauge. Yeah, <laughs> so since I didn't have gauge, I had to play around with this. And of course, me being the stubborn I am, I couldn't just listen to my mother who'd made the exact cardigan and said, I used a three millimeter hook. 
No, why would I listen to such advice? Right, anyway, I ended up using a 30 millimeter hook to actually be able to make this cardigan and I used Craft Room Treats yarn. It's all in Craft Room Treats yarn. Different blends though. Um, I'm holding it up to the camera right now. Not that it makes a difference because I actually put the camera very far away from me this time because I thought the last podcast you, you could see too much of my face up close and nobody needs to see my face that close. So instead I will put a nice picture here again where we shall focus on the sleeve section of this cardigan and you can tell that I ran out of yarn and I'm using three different colors. So the main color of this cardigan is chartreuse and I believe this is in her, it was a woolen spun base because it's just her OG base. It was woolen spun, but I believe this one had the rabbit Angora. <laughs> I think this one was Romney, Lambswool, BFL, and Angora. I might be completely wrong. Please check my Ravelry for the details. But what I'm trying to get at is I had 300 grams of yarn to start this project, and I actually ended up needing four 400? 350? Somewhere in that ballpark because I had kind of a pewtery, purpley, gray purple yarn to start with. That's what we can see in the borders and at the beginning of the sleeves. And then I had to chime in with some pewter in the OG Crafternoon base, which uh, my mom had in her stash. You know, I cannot say how awesome it is and how much I miss being able to have two stashes to pull yarn from. Because when I lived back home with my parents, mom had a stash of yarn, I had a stash of yarn, and we'd constantly combine them to try and get nice things. I miss that. Anyway, um, back to this cardigan. So, yeah, in terms of yarn, I managed to make a very cropped cardigan with 350 grams of yarn. Um, and I actually made, they're not even three quarter leg sleeves. I don't know what you call these sleeves, but they end just above my elbow. I would say about two inches above my elbow joint. That's where they end up. Um, this cardigan actually doesn't get much use because, because it's warm. And, you know, having said that, it is warm, but it's also cropped. So, 72 degrees, I could wear this. Uh, but I tend to shy away from it. I don't know why. Other things to note about this cardigan, it's never been blocked. Yeah, it's never been blocked because when I finished it, I moved, I finished it, moved to Florida, then went on a trip to EYF where I wore this beauty for the first time and it was complemented by the likes of um, Vol and Vine and, and um, oh my god, oh my god, she dyes yarn, she dyes really nice yarn, Amy, a Amy? from Stranded Dye Works. Brain, it still works. Um, yeah, so they were like, yeah. I'll never forget that, actually. I'll never forget the compliments this cardigan received. I think it's the colors. Personally, I love the color choices. Okay, so this is my first one, and I don't wanna take it off now, but maybe I should because Florida's hot, but I don't want to. I'm gonna keep it on. I'll just turn the AC down and pay the bill. Right, so this was kind of deep stash, deep memory for you guys, maybe. And if you saw me at EYF 2018, you may or may not remember me in this cute little number. But this is, as I said, 2018. So we'll move the time machine, the crochet time machine, a little bit forward to 2020. Is it still too early to say that year? It might be, it's only February. But I did release a favorite cardigan of mine. Well, it's more like a long cardigan, so I called it a flower, uh, a duster because dusters are long. <laughs> Don't you love my logic? So I worked this, and I actually think this is my most used cardi of the three. But then again, when it was really cold, I did use my other cardigan. Anyway. This is what I have called the crochet flower duster and 
boy did we lose light in the camera for some reason. So I'm going to approach this. This is all done in what I call the flower stitch. It is a vintage stitch pattern that I have in my Vogue Dictionary of Crochet Stitches and it is done um, with worsted weight yarn and it is a Premier Rodeo yarn which I'm pretty sure has been discontinued but this is a cotton acrylic blend and it's mostly done in one piece or maybe what I should say is there is not a lot of seaming involved you, we do have to seam the top of the shoulder joints and then we have to seam the sleeves in places. Uh, but this is a gorgeous, I like to think so anyway, flower duster or long cardigan. It's made crocheted in uh, kimono style. And if you're interested, I will of course link the blog post where I talked about this piece in the description box below because there you will find what I mean by crochet style and references, you know, what I used to read up on the kimono style, how it, how it was constructed, how it came to be, all that type of stuff. Um, so if you're interested in reading about that, then yeah, the blog is the best place to go, honestly. And this is also a free pattern if you want it available, but you can also purchase the PDF if you would wish to support me in my design and crafty endeavors and, you know, keeping a crochet business alive, I guess. So this is my second cardigan. And my third and last cardigan is the newest one of all. It was finished for December 31st, 2020. But I showed it to you in 2021. Um, well, if you don't count the reel that I did for Christmas Eve. Christmas, New Year's, New Year, New Year's Eve. And it is my scrap yarn cardigan. So this was a um, cow that I was running with my dear lovely mother. And we used Rosina at Zines and Rogers uh, Design for the J.W. Anderson cardigan. And this was a cardigan that was entirely inspired by... Harry Styles and how he wore it. The original designer did publish a free pattern, so if you're interested in knitting it or finding out the, what construction types they use, feel free to do so. I'll find it for you and link it somewhere. Um, but yeah, this one's entirely crocheted, and if you want any details on this cardigan, then you can head on over to the blog post. I did write a blog post about it too, and there you can read about some of the changes I did. But the most important thing to note about this cardigan is that even though I have worn it because it's lovely and warm, I made my neckband too big at the top, so it flops around like so and it falls off my shoulders. And that is because there is not enough space here to actually be a proper shoulder piece. So you can see this cardigan stays in place because it's got about two to three, two and a half to three inches of um, shoulder area and that is very very important so all these little things kind of contribute what i would do to fix that is that i wouldn't decrease quite so much and i would actually decrease this in the square below and keep the square at the top more square like <laughs> because I didn't want just, I wanted the kind of V look that you get when you crochet it. And you'll see what I mean by the pictures, or you can check out my Instagram feed for the reel or um, for the pictures. I did post it on my Instagram feed. So that is it for crochet cardigans. I've only ever made three, and these are the three that I have made. Do I have plans to make more? I can't say yes and I can't say no because honestly I love making things that I wear and cardigans are versatile and I do want to make a mustard version of the flower duster so there is that and I do kind of potentially in the future might want to make another scrap cardigan out of fingering weight yarn. Did I just jinx myself with that? I don't know. So garment related, uh, I do have several things to share with you, uh, but I think the most important one was that, you know what, 
sneak peek. Let's start instead with things that I finished because I do have some finished things. No, they are not crocheted at all, actually. I did some sewing. And yes, yes, you, you heard me correctly. I did some sewing. I braved my sewing machine and I made two little things. Where's little thing number one? Where, where is little thing number one? I, Melissa, okay. It was under all the crochets. So little thing number one is hot off my ironing board. I finished it last night and it is a coaster tiny little coaster made from uh, two inch square cutouts left over from when I used to make project bags to sell. And these are, um, except for the two squares next to the middle square, are Kath Kitston tea towels. My favorite material to make project bags with, if I am being entirely honest. And in the back, I've just got some quilting cotton And it is a light blue to match the light blue background of what would be uh, London Bridge right in this corner. And it's got some little flowers. So it's very, very cottage core and English countryside. So I'm very happy. And I just found a little thread that I need to cut. Um, so that coaster is hot off the ironing board. But the other thing that I finished is a project bag. It's been ages since uh, I think the last project bag I made was for... Um, in Christmas that I sent to Anna of Stitchcraft and Wizardry. Um, and this one actually is kind of a, I won't say, yeah, maybe a hack or an adjustment of Sandra's of Cherry Heart, her scrap stocky sock bag. You can find the pattern on Etsy and that's where I purchased it. And I just made a bigger version kind of following her dimensions. And I made this in a green and cream fabric for the middle. The bottom are my husband's old jeans that I've cut up. He was gonna throw them out anyway. So I cut them up and I also did my drawstring casing out of that jean fabric. On the inside, we've got the same um, flower cottage core type fabric that was on my coaster. And we also have lovely pockets in the green fabric. We have one, two, two, three pockets, three pockets. <clears throat> the pockets are lined differently. I don't think I'm gonna have good luck showing you, but yeah, the pockets are lined differently. There we, no. Anyway, trust me, they're lined with a different fabric and I was kind of working from scraps to make this bag, so I'm very happy with that. Things I'm not happy with this bag, I used quilters batting and I do not like using quilters batting. I think it makes for too fat of a bag, especially when you're using jean fabric. And I didn't have, didn't want to make a drawstring uh, to pull it through. So I just leave it open. I put this as a placeholder and I just leave it open. But this is a nice segue into works in progress because I do have a new project that you've never seen before and it's uh, a shawl, a shawl designed by Emma Potter from Potter and Bloom and I made it because of the Archive Cow. Cow. And if you don't know, the Archive Cow is hosted by Keep Calm and Carry Yarn, the podcast, and it's where you pick a project to make that's been in your queue for three or more years with, and in this case, um, double dipping kind of because the project has been in my queue for three years, but so has the yarn. And this yarn is a knit crepe yarn. Uh, let me see. Actually, let me show you the project first. Oh goodness. So what I am making is the balance shawl and it is a V-shaped shawl with a two row pattern repeat designed by, as I said, Emma from Potter and Broom. So right now I just have this awkward triangle that always reminds me of a thong, but we will get somewhere <laughs> with this. Um, I actually only started it and work, started it on the 1st of February, and last night, or the night before last was the first night I picked it up. So I haven't really done a lot of crocheting on this, but the few rows that I've done, I absolutely love. And I'm just gonna give you a close-up of this so you can see. Mm. 
Okay, it's not wanting to do a close-up, but um, you it's a very open lacy stitch that we're using. And as I said, it's a two-row pattern repeat, and we achieve the open and, and lace, laciness of it by using a 4.5 millimeter hook. I am pretty sure I went down a hook size, and I think the recommended hook size is a five millimeter hook. And the pattern calls for three hanks of a lovely, luxurious yarn that Emma actually sent me a couple of skeins of, and I almost made this shawl in those hanks of yarn. But instead, I chose the Love in a Mist. This is yarn from the Fiber Co. It's their canopy fingering base, Fruits of the Forest, a soft blend of bamboo, baby alpaca, and merino wool. This is fingering weight yarn, 50 grams, 50% alpaca, 30% wool, 20% viscose from bamboo. And the recommended is 2.75 uh, 2 for 3 or 3.25 millimeters. Um, they just have knitting needles, but I'm assuming that's a standard for crochet hooks too. And I have three hanks of this, which is what the pattern calls for. It calls for three hanks, or however long you want to make your shawl, because all you have to do is keep on repeating and you will get there. And this is made in kind of a, I would say a bluebell blue. It's not a sky blue, it's got more a, a softness to it than a sky blue. It's got a little bit of gray kind of blend in there. So it's a blue-gray that I'm really going to call Bluebell Blue, and I might be completely wrong because I think Bluebell Blue is meant to have some purple in it. I'm horrible at describing colors, so if you're only watching this podcast, I do apologize. <laughs> but it was showing up very true to color on screen. I mean, it's making me yellow, but the color here is very true. So that is the project I am working on, and... Let's continue the Emma show because I do have another project designed by Emma. This is my second time making it. And it is a pair of socks living in a lovely Alice in Wonderland bag. For those of you that don't know, I am mad for the Mad Hatter. I love the Mad Hatter's character in Alice in Wonderland. I've considered getting a top hat tattoo. Anyway, maybe that was TMI. The point is that I am working on a pair of socks designed by Emma Potter from Potter and Bloomed, and these are the open socks. Now, both of these designs, actually the socks, I've only made the socks once before, but both of these designs are part of her Hanging Rock Designs Collection Volume 1, and by making the balance shawl, I will have made every single pattern in that collection, which is very, very exciting. So back to the socks, because that's what we're talking about now. These open socks are a lacy kind of mock cable pattern, I think, and they're just absolutely gorgeous. I am making them in a self-striping yarn that's very thin, and the color repeats are very small, so I actually think I should have made a pair of crochet socks with this yarn, but the pattern does look very, very nice in this yarn as well. It looks like it could work. So if you've never made the open socks in a self-striping yarn but would love to, hey ho, I'm showing you, it works. At least with this short color repeat. I am pretty confident that to complete each repeat takes me about two colors, but the way it breaks up the colors, it still looks really lovely. And I'm showing it up on the screen right now. So you can see the texture of the mock cables. And this is actually a shorty sock. Uh, I'm gonna do an afterthought heel because I had the crazy idea that since this yarn was so thin and I always have a thing that my heels, my knit heels come out way too loose and they start breaking really quickly. That's just me, it's not the yarn. Um, I was gonna crochet my heel. Yeah, so this sock is actually almost ready for the toe decreases and then I will bravely cut in and make a crochet afterthought heel. Stay tuned to see how that goes. Of course, it's only one sock, so I do have to make the other one. And I kind of want to make the heel and the uh, toe in a contrasting yarn just so that I can have enough yarn left over to possibly crochet a pair of shorty socks. 
and they would be the vintage waist socks because I just want to make sure that it works with um, other brands of yarn. I know the pattern works and I know you can make it self striping by just changing colors every row and since it's worked in a spiral, um, there's no weaving in events. Anyway, I should probably tell you what this yarn is. This yarn is Moose and You Fibers. Uh, you couldn't see that, sorry. But it's Moose and You Fibers, her Squish Sock 8515 Extra Fine Superwash Merino Nylon. Unfortunately, there is no yardage, so I'm assuming it's the standard 400 something yards. Um, but who knows? Okay, so in terms of works in progress, that is it. And you might be saying, but Clarissa, oh no, sorry, I do have works in progress. <laughs> One of them is a garment. And you might say, but Clarissa, last time we talked to you, you were working on two crochet garments. Well, friends, I was. And I almost had one of those garments completely finished, ready to cut, weave in ends, block, and wear. And I didn't like it. I was attempting to adjust the Top Amelia, which is a free pattern designed by Laura of Susimu. The pattern is written in Spanish, but it's charted, so if you are comfortable with crochet charts, you can totally make one for yourself. And I do have the yarn here, because I thought I would finish fogging it after I shared it with you. So, I had already made this version once, and I thought it was too wide for the style of necklines that I like, so I attempted to fix it by adding more, and then I was like, well, I could just crochet it again, making it smaller, adjusting it, decreasing to have it fit my body the way I want it to fit. And I did that, and I wore it, and I didn't like it. So I made a reel about it, and you can find it on Instagram, and thank you so much to everybody who has liked that reel, who has commented on that reel, who has felt identified with the frogging process, because that is what I call that reel, the frogging process. And uh, I, I'm gonna say that in terms of the numbers of views, likes, and comments I usually get, this one has gone viral for me and my standards anyway. So, thank you for that, but let us show you, let us share, let us be sad together. Boy, am I looking blue. Oh god. Anyway, um, so <laughs> this is what would have been the Top Amelia. I am frogging it and I was just using the same yarn I had used to make it previously, which is a Burn That Comfy Baby Cotton, a cotton acrylic blend of yarn that I really like. It's meant to be DK. It's not. It's really just like a light worsted, if you ask me. Anyway, um, this will be something else because I don't want to try making the pattern again. Not because there's anything wrong with the pattern, but because I'm, I got angry at myself. So it's in the naughty corner for now, and then it'll be something else in the future. But sad story aside, I am working on another garment pattern, and this one is exciting. And I also did a reel about it a while ago, a while ago um, and you guys will know because it, it's a cake. And anyway, I should just show you what I'm talking. There goes the hook. Okay, I have a thing about leaving my hooks in projects. Picking up the project, forgetting the hook is there, and then the hook falls flat, always hitting its head, which makes it absolutely horrible to crochet with later because the head is flat and it catches on the yarn. Anyway. Back to pretty yarn and crochet. So, uh, uh, I shared this last time, it was nowhere near where it is now because the, no, I'm sorry, I did not share it last time. I shared it way back when, yeah, in probably the first episode of, or the second episode of 2021 because after that I just did a crochet garment tour which was really long and thank you for the feedback and for all the lovely comments. It was so nice to hear from the people that have been watching me from the beginning and it was kind of a walk down memory lane so that made me giddy. Um, but back to yarn. So this, what we have here friends, is a lovely cake of yarn. It is from Nip Picks Hawthorne Fingering. Please focus. There we go. And this is on an off-white base with splotches or speckles of color that we have here, which are yellow, orange, um, some darker blues and some teals and some limey light spots of green. It is very lightly speckled, which makes it gorgeous. 
for crochet. And this is the Panatone colorway, Hawthorne fingering, as I said. And why does it make it gorgeous for crochet? Because it doesn't come out as variegated or super heavy. It's got very, very light speckling, as you can see from the garment that I'm holding up, that is making me look blue. Why is everything making me look blue? Has to be the cardigan. Anyway, so we are working a sweater pattern. This is almost ready to be written up, except for the fact that I don't want to write a pattern. But it's almost ready to be written up. Here we have the front and the back, and this is worked in a new to me technique. And I am very happy to share it with you. Here we have squished single crochet stitches, and we also have some um, single crochet in the back loop only. And it's all put together very lovingly to crochet this garment, which right now is almost ready to be seamed and sleeves attached because it will have sleeves. I mean, I guess you could just leave it like a vest, but I'm not going to. This will have sleeves. And I'm using a four millimeter crochet hook for this. This has a lovely squishy fabric, and I am so sad that I haven't finished it sooner so I could actually get some wear out of it, some proper wear, not just some wearing it to take a picture wear. But I think this will be finished in time for my birthday, which is on the 12th of March, one month and one day away, because today is the 11th. New moon today, by the way. So I will wear it on my birthday. Even if it's 80 degrees outside, I will not leave this house and I'll put the air conditioning on 82 and I will, I mean 72, and I will rejoice in that privilege. Because this still makes me think of Funfetti cake. So that will be my birthday cake, some more Funfetti cake to celebrate the fact that I have completed a fun Fetty garment. Oh, not right now, but you guys know where I'm getting at. So in terms of crafty stuff, that is all I'm going to share with you right now. I did finish a commission. I don't want to send it in though. I'm still scared. Uh, and speaking of commissions, thank you for all the well wishes on uh, me submitting patterns to magazines. Of the five I've submitted, only one was accepted. So that's a little bit sad, but it does mean that I have more content to produce for you guys because they were thought out, you know, and um, I've got measurements, so look out for those in the future. And I, oh god, I have a lot of works in progress that I haven't shared with you, but really, I think this is getting to be really long and we've talked crochet, like it's 15 minutes long already, I think. Anyway. What else have I been doing? I've been writing blog posts. I wrote a blog post about how I like to style my crochet and what I look for in, when I make a crochet garment, making sure it fits into my wardrobe and things like that. So if you are interested in seeing a like crochet lookbook of how I style different garments, then please comment, let me know down below. Or better yet, head on over to the blog post, read what I have to say, and let me know what you think and if this is a area of discussion that you would like to continue in the future of this podcast. And other than that, I did finish a book, Vanishing Fleece by Clara Parks, and that is P-A-R-K-E-S. And I have to say that I think I cried in, or I shed tears in every chapter of that book especially in the acknowledgements. I, I was bawling in the acknowledgements. Uh, but it, Vanishing Fleece, if you don't know, it's a book about the American wool industry. And even though it does talk mostly about the American wool industry, what has happened to the American wool industry has happened to industry wool industries around the world. And it was very sad and it was also very lovely to learn more and connect more with this fiber that many of us use, even if we can't wear all the time, like me, but we still appreciate, you know, so you get to know about the shearing, the scouring, the different places all this takes place. <laughs> all these events take place and the different mills and the troubles that they ran into and if they're closing or not. Because of course, when Clara Parks does her experiment that it all starts with a bale of wool. Um, you know, it took a while for that all, I think it took about a year for her to complete that journey and then possibly another year for her to start writing the book. So I 
if I'm not mistaken, the book came out in 2019. So it's about two years ago now, and it is a wonderful read or audiobook. I actually subscribed to Audible to be able to have it read to me while I crocheted. And Clara Parks has a very lovely voice. It is like just listening to a very lovely podcast for hours on end. I absolutely loved it, and I actually regret not purchasing the book and audio version because I would have totally done it. This is a book that I will go back and read however many times I want to. It is beautifully narrated, beautifully written, and it just, I loved learning more about where the yarn that I use come, comes from, what the process is, and it was, it was just beautiful. So if you haven't heard it, or read it, I highly recommend it. And if you haven't signed up for your Audible free trial and would like to do so, being an Amazon Prime member, then do so. This is not sponsored by Amazon in any way. I just, that's what I did. I, I subscribed to my Audible for 30 days free trial just so I could listen to Clara Parks read this book to me. Right, so I think that is enough about me and my bibliophile ways. <laughs> I hope that you guys enjoyed this episode and please let me know what you're up to in the comments below. Interact with me. Don't just leave me alone talking to myself, looking at myself in the viewfinder. Don't, don't leave me alone doing that, okay? It's kind of um, a little bit sad when you think about it that way. And my dog is always judging me, of course, because he's just like, really? You're just sitting there in front of that camera again? Anyway, thank you so much for joining me today. If you like this video, then please hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. It is one of the best ways to keep in touch uh, because YouTube changed the algorithm again. And I, I had noticed it, that people I'm subscribed to, I don't see their content on my feed anymore. And apparently it's now based on not just whether you're subscribed to that person, but whether you actually watch their content. Anyway. I just want to thank you. Thank you for joining me in these 40 minutes or however long I edit this down to so you don't have to listen to me ramble. But, oh my god, I'm even confusing myself. So I'm just going to stop here and wish you a very, very happy crafting and just lots of love for you and everyone around you. And don't forget to spread more love. So happy crafting, guys. Bye. Mm. I should finish it till she I'm dead there, you know, start crying, no? Okay. <clears throat> what? Oh wow. Hmm. Como que no se me ve el pelo.